we're all excited to uh, be back together to talk about the NOFO. Feels like, you know, just yesterday <laughs> that we were uh, talking about the 2022 NOFO and SNOFO, and now we are talking about the 2023 NOFO. Um, so I'm Liz Isaacs from Housing Innovations. Shannon Quinn Sheeran, my colleague, is here. Miles, everybody's favorite housing innovation person, is also with us, um, and he'll keep us on the straight and narrow if we start making stuff up. Um, as always, please just jump in and ask questions. This is um, supposed to be helpful for everyone. And so if what we're saying doesn't make any sense, you need clarification, you want us to slow down, please, please throw it in the chat, unmute yourself, uh, because we really want this to be helpful for you. We're going to say this over and over, so I'll start with it. Um, the instructions are not out yet. So like last year, we just felt like we had to get a webinar out um to get this started and kicked off um we are anticipating that much will look like it has in the past we know that there are some new and notable things and we're going to tell you about them we will need to provide further instructions once hud instructions come out on those um but forgive us if we're wrong on something because something could change drastically and the instructions. We don't anticipate that from what we're able, as you know, we read the NOFO, we glean as much information as we can from that. Um, and then we try to note what's new and different. It is what it is. We'll do our very best here. Um, and yeah. And so, we are, as Liz said, we are recording. So um, I just put the links up to the slides in the chat. And after today, the recording will be posted to the competition page on the CT Boss website. Absolutely. And we definitely we have a few new sub recipients um, and recipients this year. So if you're here, great. If um, you're here, but maybe one of your colleagues isn't here, please encourage them to look at the slides, to um, look at the recording, and then we'll say this over and over again. Please contact us. Don't suffer in silence or be frustrated. There are really no dumb questions in the HUD world. We say that all the time, right? So just pick up the phone or shoot us an email. Um, and also, I am going to say this. You don't need to remember it because you'll see they're out of office, but Shannon and Miles are going to try to take take a breath and take a little bit of a vacation. So I will be your con primary contact for the next two weeks. They'll be off the next two weeks. Um, we're all going to caucus and stay in touch. But if you can remember that, that's great. If you forget it, you're going to get an out of office that tells you to reach out to me. And you can always reach out to me with my email, which is going to be here, um, or we check the CT boss email. Um, a lot. Okay. L lots of logistics. We welcomed you. We're going to talk about, again, things that are new and, new and exciting. We're going to do a quick intro to eSnaps so you guys can tune out if you know how to do that. But we really just want to make sure that folks are comfortable getting into eSnaps. We're going to talk about your applicant profile, the renewal evaluation applications, um, the DOH con plan cert form, which a bunch of you will need to do, um, what's going to happen with YHDP. The timeline, which will be, um, well, which we'll have to update you on also once the instructions come out and resources for you to help you get through this process. Um, so I feel like we, we tell people this all the time, but please, please sign up to get boss emails. And the way that you do that um, is to go to the CT Boss uh, website and right in the middle, you can click on it and you can decide which emails you want. If you are um, a provider, you definitely want the grantee emails. And now we have a new option. If you're a SNOFO provider, you can choose SNOFO. If you want to see what's happening at the steering committee, you can choose that. So not that we ever mind, because we will redirect you, but that's the way to get on the email list. If you reach out to us and say, put me on the email list, we're going to ask you to go to this link because we want you to get the emails that work best for you. We're not, not trying to be helpful. We just want you to only get the emails you want. And then please remember um, that you need to get into uh, that you're going to be submitting your renewals in Zengen. And if you're having any Zengen issues, Shan Shannon's your go-to, but I'll try to help you when she's not here. But if you go to this link, it tells you how to create an account. It tells you how to submit a document. All the information exactly. is there at that link. 
<laughs> yes. So this is a good plug. If you don't know what Zengen is or we're confusing you or you need an update, go in now. <laughs> go in now while you can catch Shannon. Um, and we can stay around for a few minutes too when we're finished um, if you have specific questions. But please reach out to us and, uh, and ask questions. So what is new and what is notable? So this year, HUD is asking specifically in the renewal evaluation applications to make sure that what you are doing is aligning with HUD strategic goals. I won't read through all of these things, but these are things you may need to address. This is a big question mark for us because in the renewal application, maybe it's a checklist. Maybe it's a narrative. We're not sure how you're going to need to answer that, but we will provide guidance to you. So we will either say, please make sure you have these checked, or we will provide sample language that you could potentially use. Let Shana, me, I just want, want yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the language in the NOFO says you have to pick uh, um, one or a few of these that your project addresses and supports. Tell us how it addresses and supports these issues. And then you have to also have a way of assessing and, and monitoring your project on those items that you choose. So again, like they, they didn't say what this is going to look like in each renewal application or how you need to demonstrate this. So we'll give you further guidance when that comes out. Yep. Thank you. That's helpful, Shannon. <laughs> and then that, oh, sorry, that last item okay. there. Um, the, another thing that they say is HUD is going to consider the extent to which the application demonstrates experience and resources to effectively address the needs of um underserved communities, BIPOC, and they um, consider BIPOC among them. So that's another thing where we are not exactly sure what that's going to look like, but, but, but be on the uh, lookout for more guidance on that. Perfect. Great. Um, also, and I'll let Shannon jump in if I start making things up here, but there's a new eligible activity with VAWA costs that anyone um, can can use to facilitate and coordinate activities to make sure that you are compliant with emergency transfer plans. So this isn't new money, right? So this right. is money you would have to. So the bit. So we'll say this also over and over again. Just remember, like you have what you have. So if you've always gotten a hundred thousand and that's your renewal amount. Unfortunately, we'd love to say there's more money. There's no more money. But HUD this year seems to be letting you do a little more shifting. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second than they have in the past. Um, and so you're able to, Shin, is there anything else to say about the, what you can do with these new activities? Um, there, no, there's, I think, look, again, keep a lookout in the renewal application. Um, if people want to look at the NOFO, there are examples of what might be eligible as a VAWA cost and VAWA okay. for anybody who doesn't know is the Violence Against Women Act. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, go ahead and talk about the 10, shifting 10% 10 and Sure. Yeah. Sure. So both um, DV bonus folks renewals, and I'm sorry. Yeah. And right. And regular other renewals can um, shift projects up. So a lot of folks are used to doing this, right? You can shift 10% from one approved activity to another, but new this year is you could do it at the NOFO time instead of going through the process that you've gone through in the past, which is just to shit, do it and make um, HUD aware of it. So what's nice about this is it becomes permanent, right? So those of you who have done this in the past, you do it for the year that you're in, right? During your operating year, but then it doesn't carry over. So this will carry over. So good news, it'll carry over, but like, be careful what you wish for, right? So make sure that if you're doing it, it, it makes sense to your project and isn't just something that's applicable to this operating year or one, you know, isn't a one-off sort of. Um, you also this year can change the subpopulations um, that you're that you're going to serve, but you need to make sure that you're continuing to serve all the people obviously currently in your project. The subpopulations is specific to renewals. DV bonus still has to serve the same population that they serve, yes. and YHDP has to continue to serve youth. And then remember for boss, P, did you just say PSH has to serve dedicated plus? So you still need to stay in the parameters that boss keeps you in, but you are able to change subpopulation. So I'm thinking what they're thinking more here is maybe you're serving people. Um, 
with uh, substance use disorders versus mental health, maybe you're shifting those numbers around. Um, yeah. And again, instructions aren't out on this yet. So more to come. Anything that we have noted as new and notable, we will make sure that we provide written instructions um, once once we know what's what. Anything Sylvia, else? I saw Sylvia's hand up. Do you have a question or? Yes, and it might be a shortcut question, Liz. The 10%, if you were to put it in this thing and it was between rental assistance and supportive services, it could throw you off on the GIW next year. Is that the be careful what you wish for? Yeah, and I just mean it's so it's a change. So once you put it, once you make the change, that's your new agreement with HUD. Because remember, which is helpful for me to think of it this way. The your renewal application is sort of an amendment to your contract with HUD, right? That's what you're promising to do. So if you switch your budget, that's your new budget, you know, forever until you switch it up again. But okay. I will I'll remind everybody that this shifting up to 10% of funds from one budget line item to another is something that DOC projects are allowed to do any time of the year as long as mm -hmm. it's 10% or under. So exactly. if you do it and you decide halfway through your grant next year, I want to shift 10, some money under 10% back, you yes. can do that. That's a good point. Yeah. So it's not that it can't be fixed. You just want to think it through. Yeah. Uh, but like Shannon said, life changes and then you have the ability to switch it back. But is it the risk that I was asking, like what happens with us? Like with a GIW messing up your FMR actual. The, you know, again, they haven't provided instructions, but I think so, right, Shannon? So like, same thing. If you, I, you can't pull money from a line that requires that amount of money. So if you have an FMR, rental assistance, you cannot pull 10% off on that without messing up the amount you're getting for FMR. I think that we the renewal. Yes. For the renewal, but you could do it in the middle of the year for a temporary. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. But right. but stay tuned Good on question. that because I think exactly. we need more guidance. Like when they say shift up to 10, they said nothing at all about FMR right. rates or anything. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And if they don't provide that, I'm glad you're raising it, Sylvia. We could put it in AAQ just to clarify that, but we'll we'll make sure we have good instructions to folks on that. Oh, and so they'll give us good instructions on what actual rent means. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's stop dreaming, <laughs> Sylvia. Come on now. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. No dreams. No dreams here. Or dream crushers. Um, also, what's new and notable. Um, so I've talked to a few of you about this um because I've reached out in the um and it's 4B, again, if the application changes, it's not 4B, but currently in 4B, you need to note your geographic area. So if you are a single site project and you are in New Haven, you are going to choose city of New Haven. You are not gonna choose the county of New Haven. So we're trying to clean up all the applications. So in the past, a lot of providers have chosen New Haven County. It's neither here nor there. You're not wrong because it is a New Haven County, but we're trying to make sure that when a project, whether it's scattered site or single site, exists only in one city that you, you put the city. And this has to do with the con plan certs. We're trying to clean everything up and make sure that we're using the correct jurisdictions for all of the boss projects. Um, and we'll reach out to you if we think there are concerns, but if you could just pay attention to 4B, and again, if your project only is in the city of Hartford, you're not choosing Hartford County, you're choosing city of Hartford. Um, I think we again, did see, yeah. we did see in some of the grants, right, that um, some yeah. people indicated that their area is Fairfield County or some yes. locations within Fairfield County, which is not possible for a CT right. boss project. So if you could just be aware of that also as you're doing this. Yes, and our reviewer will, will bounce back um, that, but if you can be on the alert, so Fairfield County is not ours, and we do not want to show up in the application. Um, yeah, that so includes all the Fairfield counties, you know, Danbury, was it Stratford, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. as think, you can see, this upsets Miles greatly, so we don't want to upset Miles. <laughs> <laughs> I think originally it was uh, by congressional district if i remember correctly right there is a separate um, section for congressional district at the beginning of the application um yeah so that 
there is some overlap with congressional districts like CT Boss area right. and the Fairfield County area. But we're talking here on the, um, as it says, that 4B, that's where your units are actually located. So that should be more specific oh, okay. Okay. than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I was at City Waterbury. Um, well, they could the congressional district, if your your project is only in one congressional district, your project should just indicate one congressional district. Uh, there are sometimes projects will indicate all the congressional districts, <laughs> even though they only belong in one, that, that should be fixed as well. Uh, that's not really something we really review. So, uh, and not mainly because I don't know the, you know, can, can, your congressional districts, so I wouldn't know. But in most cases, I see something weird, like um, you know, it says four congressional districts because your agency deals with four congressional districts, but your project's only one. Like it only says New Haven. I, I think that would be an error. But you know, otherwise we don't really check that. But okay, but I mean, I think we had two congressional districts put down. I think it was all five and all three. And because our coverage, you know, relates to both districts, is that okay? Yes. yes. Your project, yeah. Your and, and we don't both? get nuts yes. about it because there's too much else to get nuts about, and we're we're always we're continuously trying to triage. But the reason we mention the other jurisdictions is because if HUD ever went back and forth, which we don't know if they do, we're just trying to make sure that that's correct. All right, so I'm going to keep us moving. We got lots to do. I think so, Meredith I, has oh, a hand up. Oh, I'm Can sorry, I interrupt Meredith. you for one minute, Liz? Uh, um, okay, the, Gary, the then con, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. The con plan <laughs> was originally done or always done by Belinda in Waterbury. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a designated person to do the con plan now other than Belinda or so have it signed by the mayor? Yeah, I don't know if she's on, but we have Samantha now, who is our um, community rep, also from CHD. So okay. we will reach out to Samantha on that. Okay, thank you. Yep, but thank you. Thank you for thinking about that, Gary. All right, yep. Meredith. Thanks, just a quick clarification. So uh, for the town, so we have a couple of rapid rehousing projects. So like today, all of our clients may be in the city of New Haven, but it doesn't mean we might not house somebody in West Haven next week. You know, just it's with the amount that we're housing, is it easier, should we keep it New Haven County just to allow us that flexibility? I just don't want to limit ourselves. No, I appreciate that. And Shannon, did we look at this? We keep looking at application. I keep forgetting. I believe we'll provide instructions. I think you can choose both. Yeah. You decide that, Shannon? That's you can what we both. decided. So you should I'm choose glad both. you're saying that, Meredith. We had actually, we'd ask you to check both. And now I'm going to give you guys more information you want. Okay. You're going to check both. And then, um, you know, New Reach ABC project will then show up on the con plan for the city of New Haven and will also show up at on the DOH con plan, which is okay. which covers anything. So I appreciate you saying that. Okay. And um, I'll thank make a note to make sure I provide that. So that's exactly it. Yep. But Perfect. thank you. Thank You're you. right. Because we want to make sure we're covering. We just never want someone to come back and say, oh, you didn't tell us this project's here or to go to HUD and say they aren't doing yeah, what they're supposed to be exactly. doing. So, okay. Perfect. So thank Liz, you. Just one more question on this. It's not like you're making the distinction between um, where the physical services are provided as opposed to where our clients come from, right? We serve clients from throughout the state, but it's where the units are. Where yeah. The units are physically located. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Great. All right. My condolences if you're new to East Naps. Condolences if you're not new to eSnaps, but it's what we got. So if you've never heard of eSnaps, <laughs> um, which I think most of you have, but if you're brand new, HUD does have an, at the end there resources, you really are going to want to kind of wrap your head around this sooner rather than later. And also just a plug, super important that you have at least two users. We'll probably talk about this again. Um, so please, please, what you can do ahead of time right now after this webinar is hop on eSnaps, make sure you have two users um, because we really don't want anyone getting stuck. And we unfortunately, it feels like every year somebody gets stuck. So this, I, we're hoping this is the year nobody gets stuck without um, access. So what is eSnaps? It's the electronic um, platform that allows you to submit your application to HUD. Um, as you know, we do one for the COC, and then you're going to do one for each uh, renewal project you have, and then new projects also um, do it. And if you are 
a DEMIS uh, subrecipient or a DOH subrecipient and you're confused about anything, you know, you have your contact people there. But in the last few years, it's been pretty clear cut. People know the subrecipients are, you know, do the applications. Um, and if you have a question, you'll reach out to your friends at DOH and DEMIS to ask questions. Um, so if you're going to get started in eSnaps, you want to make sure that um, you have um, a profile. I'm not going to go through each of these, but <laughs> you need to you need to make sure you have an applicant profile. And I don't remember if we're saying this later. So if you are a DEMIS subrecipient, DEMIS actually this week has finished their applicant profile. You are not going to do anything with the applicant profile if DEMIS or if DOH. If they are the grantees, they deal with the applicant profile. So you do not need to do anything. If you are the grantee, you need to update your applicant profile, which you can do right now. So there you do not need to wait for further instructions. So what I would say is if you have not updated your applicant profile, we're going to talk about it in the upcoming slides, try to get started and do that because you can do that now. And then if you have questions, we can ask those questions, get those answered now. Um, and so you can go through this, you know, if you have two screens and you need a hand, you can use this as your guidance. Again, we're also going to give you um, guidance. Uh, we're going to give you the links to the instructions and the navigation guide. So the navigation guide for whenever you see that word, it actually tells you step by step how to work in the applicant profile, how to work in the renewal application. So if you are brand new, I would suggest that you use the navigation guide to just walk through each of these because um, we're not going to go through every every step here. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. Um, so this tells you how, oh, and, and there's your navigation guide link. So again, brand new or you need a refresher. If you have two screens, great, or you can toggle between screens, but it's really helpful to have the navigation guide just walk you through each step um, here. So each year we plead with people to let Miles, Miles um, have access to your application. I know some agencies have policies where that's not possible. That's fine. We're not pushy about it, but it really is helpful. As we all know, Miles is tremendously responsible. He's not going to do anything without your permission, but really every year he's able to hop in and clean things up for people, help people out. Sometimes people get locked out of eSnaps. Sometimes they just want someone else in with them. It's really helpful. Um, and we show you right here, super easy to add a registrant. I'd add Miles if you can. So that's, it's not mandatory, but highly, highly suggested. Um, so speaking of Miles, he just put together, so this is a link, the 2022 mm -hmm. renewal project list. It's actually 2023. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, I'm sorry. Year. It's yeah. like, I don't it is the right year. link, but it's the right link, but it's we're a year off, which yeah. that's, that's, that's us. So you're doing these for your projects that are expiring sometime in 2024 in the calendar year. We really, 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 every year we go through this too, want you to use the project name that's listed here. You know, sometimes it's fun to mix things up, but it's pretty important that it matches the GIW and matches. We never want HUD to see a project and maybe not know what it is or where it came from. We're pretty conservative on that. So if you could use the list um, and make sure you name your project what's listed on that list, that would be super helpful. Also, we're never, we're, ne we're never talking about snowfall again. We'll talk about snowfall a lot at some point, but not today. And we're no nothing has to do with snowfall. So those are three-year awards and we're not doing any snowfall work anytime soon, I hope. <laughs> so now hopefully not for another two, two years. So anyway, don't worry about your snowfall grants in terms of renewing them. And that this the 2023 renewal list, take a look at that also for the naming of your project this year, um, because there are a few projects that change names year to year. Is that right, Miles? Well, I already counted for anyone that puts the year in there. So like last year, they put 2022 or FY 2022. I renamed them to 2023 or FY 2023. Right. Uh, that's the only thing I changed. So you see the highlight in green. I already changed it for you guys. Uh, for anyone else, I didn't make any changes. Uh, I did highlight a few projects, which we are not sure on the status uh, because HUD hasn't released it yet on who's applying for those grants that are transferring. 
Uh, right. That one gets a little trickier. So they're highlighted right now because um, um, at this moment, we don't know the status on that. Uh, right. The only one I think is the Housing Collective because they already changed the name. I, I think that would be automatic, but anyone else, uh, the transfers might be in previous years, sometimes the transfers didn't get approved in a sense by HUD with the GIW. So we had to, you had to apply with the old grant agency again, even okay. though it could be transferred and HUD would transfer it later. All right. Thank you. Sounds, sounds good. Also, I've noticed Shannon put in the chat, which is helpful if DEMIS or DOH is your grantee, Miles already can see your project. <laughs> so you, you don't need to do anything. So it's really just if you are the grantee that you would want to give Miles permission. So I already alluded to, we talked a little bit about the applicant profile. This is something if, D, again, if DOH and DEMIS are not your grantee, you can go in and do right now. You're, we're not, you're not waiting for anything because this is always available in eSnaps. Um, so go ahead and hop in. I won't go through each of these because my time is almost done, um, but follow this, follow these instructions on how to go in. You have to, you have to update it. So you may as well do it now. Um, go ahead in and it, it should have um, import data and then you need to update, which is I think next, the famous 2880. Um, so this will need to be updated. And you wanna just make sure that everything is up to date. So the contact information, sometimes that's changed, right? The person at your agency has changed. You wanna make sure your districts are right. The 2880, which talks about the funding. Um, you wanna make sure that your code of conduct is on file. I feel like this comes up every year. We have some people who don't have this on file. So you wanna do that. Um, can you I ask to, that a yeah. question related to that? I, every year I end, end up putting in the code of conduct conflict of interest policy. I've never seen where it said, is this on file? And it says yes. Uh, so I constantly have to do it over again. Do they have a particular way in which they put people's code of conduct once you download it or upload it on file? That's a great question. I don't know, Shannon, Miles. I anyone? don't know. I'm sure they do have a way. But so you're saying, Gary, that you've looked at this list, which is linked here when it's where it says on file, and you never see your agency come up. Never. I have never seen it. And other people have said the same thing. <laughs> so yeah, I like, don't. Know. I mean, it's not a problem. I just you know upload it again. But yeah, oh, unfortunately, I'm question. not sure what the process is. You yeah. could always. I, I recall that. Um, um, this is. <laughs> Maybe you recall wrong, but yeah, so th take this with a grain of salt. But I thought there was in somewhere in instructions that you're also supposed to send it to HUD directly. And this is just. Oh, maybe that's it, because yeah. I don't think I've ever, you know, that no one's even ever asked. Uh, but yeah. I don't know. You could be right, Miles. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I remember reading one time in years past, but I could be wrong in that because it's. Right, uh, we'll, we'll make a note that. Yeah, that we will make a note to check. There it out. might be additional information at that first link, the code of conduct link. Also, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a huge problem. I just uploaded it earlier. Oh, I know. Right. Be nice if things were simpler, though. All right, so we're going to talk about renewal project <laughs> applications. <laughs> Um, and then this just again, I'm not going to go through each um, screen, yeah, but this is how it. you're going to um, set up your application. Um, you only need to uh, do, uh, set up the applicant piece once, depends. so you may have 10 renewals, um, you only have to set this particular uh, screen up just once, and it walks you through um, funding opportunity registrations, and then follow the arrows, and you can get started. And then this is how you create the actual project. You're going to click on projects, you're going to filter, and then you can click on the little on the paper. Icon. And this is this is the step where all the information from last year's application is imported into this year's application. The, exactly. the um, number two there. Exactly. <clears throat> so yes, you, you want to make sure you do that so that'll save you some time. And then we're going to talk in a minute about trying to do as much as you can without adding new information. Um, oh, yeah. So you're going to import from. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. State. This is the no, one. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's fine. You'll you'll be prompted. You'll say yes. You'll save, and then you're going to be there. I um, think this is where you hand it over to me, Liz. 
Excellent. Shannon's going to. All right. I'm going to take it from here. And I wasn't going to say anything, but, but since you were talking about making wishes, I'm going to say today is my birthday and I'm going to have a birthday wish that this all goes smoothly for all of us. So <laughs> Sylvia and Liz were talking about wishing for miracles. Let's just go ahead and wish that everything goes smoothly <laughs> this year. <laughs> um, so begin renewal application. Um, it can be tricky if you're new to this, that what, if you're scanning through and looking at it, you might say, oh my gosh, this stuff is missing. What did I do wrong? But until you go through all of these screens that say SF424, your whole application <coughs> doesn't show up. So don't be alarmed. Go through those first three screens, few screens, finish those, click certify where it says certify, and then the rest of the application will open up. Um, so just go ahead and review all that information before you go any further. Um, we said the item about the congressional district already. 1A, um, uh, application type PIN number, just so you know the PIN number is the CT number and the first four digits of your grant number. That's on screen 1A. Next slide. Oops. <clears throat> Submit without changes. Um, HUD and we encourage everybody as much as possible to um, change as little as possible in your application. And we'll see in the next screen, but before we go there, um, I, most projects will have something to change because uh, as you, the, the, when you import your information, it's from 2022. So everything you submitted rental assistance dollars is going to be the same as it was if everything works correctly, which it will. Um, uh, it's going to be the same as you submitted in 2022. So probably your rental assistance dollars will have increased. And if that's increased, then your match amount will have increased. So you might have to make a few changes, but if it's just a sentence or two in your project description, that's maybe not as accurate as it should be, don't worry about changing those things. Um, HUD encourages, because as much as possible, if you click submit without changes, HUD says that passed, passed inspection last year, we don't need to look at it again. So then it's not um, a, an, a risk at all of your project having any issues with it. So that's part of the reason we encourage people to do that. Um, submit without changes. So. Um, also at the top of this is, is a question about if you are reallocating an, any funds at this point in time, we don't know anybody who's reallocating funds. So go ahead and submit, um, no for that. Uh, and then you, the, it pulls all, all the pieces of the application and you check, check one, if it's a place that you do need to make a change. Um, so again, you might check in part six, match or the summary budget, if those items have changed, if you have to um, put an attachment on, which we'll talk about attachments later, click those. And then below here, which isn't shown on the screen, is that, okay, you click this, why did you click it? What changes are you making? So I think the easiest way to answer that question is to just put bullets. Um, 6D, increase the match because budget, rental assistance budget increased. 6C, um, increased rental assistance and what have you. Just super brief, but address each item that you checked. In the past, I will say we have had a couple of people um, check things in error. So for instance, you could just say 3A project detail, checked in error, no changes made. Um, so if they're allowing people to change subpopulations, would it would it would it be with submit with changes uh, correspond to that? I assume. Yes. Uh, okay. I, are there questions in the chat? Oh, someone said happy birthday. Thank Lots you. Lots of happy birthdays. <laughs> <Yeah. Shannon. laughs> Thanks, everyone. I appreciate that. Excuse me. Projects that submit with no changes. Okay. Um, so there may not be very many of these. So this applies to projects that submit with no changes or with changes. You have to check recipient performance. And then recipient performance, 
there are questions about like, did you submit your APR on time? Did you um, return any of your funds to HUD? And we have found in the past that some people don't fill that out correctly, that they have indeed returned funds to HUD, but they checked no, that they didn't. So please just pay attention to the accuracy of those responses. And if the answer is yes, we return funds, they ask you why. And so you would put in why, and people have put in people's rental portions were, for instance, more than we expected them to be. And so we got money back in our project. Those kinds of things are like HUD will understand, we understand. And we just ask that you also input something about how you're trying to remedy the situation and not give back funds in, in the future. You're looking at your budgets more regularly. You're using that 10% shift in funds, that kind of a thing. Um, renewal expansion, you have to check. Renewal grant consolidation screens, sources of match. Um, review part seven to ensure you don't have to add anything in all of part eight. Consolidations, I just wanna give another plug. I have heard of, um, of two projects that are planning to consolidate. I don't know if we know of more at this time, but um, if you are able to, it's a great option to have less administrative responsibilities, um, fewer APRs, fewer project applications, fewer budgets to keep track of, um, maybe increased funding flexibility with that um, increase in funding and budget line items. Um, consolidations, if you're gonna consolidate, you have to have the same applicant and be of the same project type. You can consolidate between two and 10 grants at a time. Um, and if you are gonna consolidate, you have to submit separate applications, one for your basic renewal and then a new or two each. If you're consolidating two projects, you have to submit renewals for each of those and then a third, which is a consolidated application. Next slide. And just if you're interested in this, you wanna just tell us ASAP because we just wanna make sure they're on our radar and that we specifically help you on your renewal since they're a little bit different. Thank you, yeah. Housing first, we just put up this screen because uh, it can be tricky for people also to understand. So does this project enroll, all of our projects in CTBOS are required to be housing first. So does this project enroll all program participants who have the following barriers? So you must select all of them except none of the above. Having too little income, we don't we don't use that as a barrier for people. People with active history of substance abuses, yes, we still enroll them. Have a criminal record, yes. Have a history of victimization, yes, we enroll all of these people even though they have those what HUD calls barriers. Um, and 3C, you have to check the top four as well. Um, everything except none of the above. And then the 3D below should automatically say yes, um, this project follows housing first. It, it, will only say, it will only say yes after you save, uh, if you had to do a check mark. Thank you, uh, thank it you, Liz. Won't, it won't all populate until you hit the save. Perfect, thank you. Supportive services. Um, again, if you're not making any changes to supportive services and you click no changes on that screen, this is not relevant for you, but just a reminder that um, for, a provider, if you indicate that a, pro, a partner is um, doing one of your activities, then your agency must have a signed MOU with that agency. And then also any supportive services that are funded through this grant have to either say applicant or subrecipient as the provider of those services. Again, if this is something that passed inspection last year and you're not changing it, that's fine. You can click submit without changes. But if you are changing anything, just keep these items in mind. Housing type and location. I think Liz mentioned this. As a, as a rule overall, HUD pays attention to numbers, right? Budget numbers, people numbers, unit numbers. So we wanna pay special attention um, that the units have to match the 2023 GIW or grant agreement if you have units in the GIW or grant agreement. And the total units and beds 
must be consistent, 4B must be consistent with 5A households and 5B subpopulations um, and indicate the maximum capacity at a point in time. Um, units supported only by supportive services without rental numbers. So that's for 4B. Is that right, Liz? Numbers yeah, reported must. They won't be in 4B, but they'll be in 5A and B. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next slide. Budgets. Okay. In general, and like we already said the thing about the 10% shift, right? But in general, the summary budget line items or BLIs in the GIW are, must agree with what's in your application. You might shift the 10%. Your total annual renewal amount, your total of your whole grant is for sure gonna stay the same. This is not an increase in funding the new allowable activities. Um, so that um, total budget must stay the same. Um, and just pay attention to your GIW. If you are shifting funds, pay attention to the 10% or less out of one and into another budget line item. So everything adds up to the same total amount. Um, reallocation is an, uh, another exception to um, the rule about the budget line items meeting. So you would lower um, the total grant amount, lower the funding accordingly in the budget summary budget line item. Next. Indirect cost rate, you're going to ask if you are intend to, yeah. use, you're, you'll be asked to um, indicate whether you intend to use an indirect cost rate or not. So pay attention on that screen. If you have an approved indirect cost rate, you must submit a copy of that approval with the application. Um, if you're working on one, an indirect cost rate agreement with, with HUD or with, um, I think it's HHS, um, that should be submitted as soon as the applicant is notified of the conditional award. And if you have questions on indirect cost rate, Here's some resources for you that have lots of good information on that complicated topic. Match. So match must equal 25% of the total assistance requested. You include admin in that, but you do not, the only thing that you do not include is leasing. And very few of our projects have leasing, but if you do, you don't include that in the 25% match. Please, we recommend not exceeding the 25% match because HUD monitors on that and they're gonna look for how you used more money than is necessary to support this grant. So 25%, um, we recommend not going above that. There's a, this question that you're required to answer, does the project generate income and how much you anticipate that income to be um, because that can be used as match. We are also discourage using third party in kind match because HUD, because this is really match is very much funding that goes towards supporting this grant in some way or another. So whether it is supporting supportive services, mental health care or child care for the participants in this grant or whether it's supporting um, administration, administrative staff supervisors, case management services, those type of things. When when people come to monitor, they look at how this these dollars were applied and they look at your fiscal records. So in kind match, the the documentation requirements are so onerous that um, in general, we recommend against that if at all possible. Just wanted to shout out for that. For more information on match, there's another link here. Budget screens, again, these are probably need to be updated for most of the grants. Um, renewal projects, they used to have to submit detailed budgets for these things, but they don't anymore. Lease structures, supportive services, operating, or HMIS. Um, I just messed myself up there. I lost my screen. Okay. Um, review the rental assistance dollars review that it's correct for leasing. Um, you're gonna have to review the screens for the type of rental assistance, 
FMR area, whether full FMR is requested, those screens are before this screen, and the unit distribution. You have to add admin fees on this screen. And then the reminder about paying attention to the GIW and that the limit on admin for boss is 7%. I think Lisa has a question. Oh, great. <laughs> hey, Shannon, yeah, sorry about that. I just want to remind folks for the grants that um, Demas is the grantee for, I will send you guys your um, match letter. Okay. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Great. Super. Attachments. Huh. What this, was that a blank on attachments? Oh, what's that? Sorry about that. I have some information on attachments I can just <laughs> talk about. Um, so it's required. Um, nonprofit <laughs> documentation is required to be attached for projects with nonprofit sub recipients. Third party in kind match commitment, if you're using that, is also required attachment. Um, replacement reserve supporting documentation, which is rare, but if it's applicable, you need to attach that. And again, what I just said about the indirect cost rate, if you have a federally approved indirect cost rate agreement, you have to attach that as well. Great. Sorry, we will. I don't know. It just disappeared, but we'll, we'll make it reappear. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and do you want me, I'll just do this quick. That'd be great. I'm send, yeah, I'm going to send more information out about this, especially because, uh, like I said, we're sort of cleaning this, cleaning these up. Um, but those of you who have filled these out in the past know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you'll get instructions. But basically, any um, units or services that exist outside a con plan jurisdiction, so I don't know how many there are, over a dozen in the state of Connecticut, um, we ask the state of Connecticut through DOH, um, through their con plan to certify these, um, these projects. And so you need to fill out what we refer to it as the long form, the DOH con plan form. You generally can copy the one from the year before. Um, and so hopefully it's not crazy onerous, but I will send instructions out on that. But I just wanted to make sure it was on everybody's radar because many of you do need to complete these. So stay tuned for more information. Um, but we are going to ask that you get them back to us in early August. Um, and I will send out a separate email targeted just to the people who need to complete these. Thank you. Common fit pitfall. So again, these is, these are just reminders. Um, most of this we've covered already. APR spending. If your grant was underspent, note, note that and tell tell HUD why. Um, budget match the ten percent unless moving match the GIW unless moving the ten percent. Um, the total of your grant amount is not going to change. Um, make sure you include any attachments needed. Um, and the populations and subpopulations need to match the numbers that we just talked about, section four and section five. Yep. So um, I just want to say we're going to move on now to YHDP. I, I'll cover, I'll tell you briefly the timeline, which is not set in stone yet, because again, the information is not out. We don't know when eSnaps is going to open. So um, if people want to hop off, I'm just going to jump through the before we go through YHDP, I'll run through the timeline. Thanks, Liz. Um, yep. So one week and we'll get an email out to you all on this as well when it happens. But one week after eSnaps is open, all the renewal applications are due to be submitted to us through Zension through that link we talked about earlier. Um, and then we'll give ourselves a week to get within one week, could be before, but within one week, we'll get back to you all to say, to ask you to either make revisions or go ahead and submit that in eSnaps. And if you need to make any changes, we'll give you about three days, three working days to do that. Um, and just a reminder to you to have more than one person be able to get into eSnaps for you. Um, so that's the tentative timeline. Again, we'll send out an, an email to you all when anything is updated on that. Um, yeah. um, and can I ask? Yeah, Gary, go ahead. Yeah. So, Sam, I'm sorry. So the instructions are not yet out. 
Do mm -hmm. they come out prior to opening these snaps? I think they I mean, usually come out at the same time. <laughs> so wouldn't you have to kind of review the instructions in order to properly mm -hmm. do the application? That's what, when we send out an update saying, okay, eSnaps is open, uh -huh. we intend to give you the additional guidance on how to do those new things yep. and give you the deadline as well. Yeah. Um, so it's all kind of at the same time, the instructions yes. and eSnaps. Yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. I'm just yes. trying to figure out like when I would be able to, all right. All right. Yes. But, I'm just but trying to get a timeline. Yeah, out. we will when, very when quickly. Do you Send, yeah. send both of those out. But yeah, good point, Gary. No, it, yeah. they happen at the same, they they happen at the same time. Yeah. Um, and if they don't, then we'll wait because we won't want anything due before the instructions are out. So right. we'll be the later of um, e-snaps or um, instructions. the instructions out. But last year they were at the same time. What What is your guess as far as when this would go down? <laughs> last year, um, Everything came out, the NOFO came out, or no, yeah, NOFO came out August 5th, and then by the 15th, the um, eSnaps was open and the instructions were out, so we're kind of running with that same timeline, but we don't know. <laughs> okay, all right, just asking. Yeah, yeah. All right, so YHDP. Um, so yeah, so so as Shannon already said, so um, if there aren't any more questions, and there'll be lots of time for you to ask us questions if you don't have one right now, um, you, you're you welcome to stay, but we're just talking YHDP for the next couple of minutes. Um, so if anybody wants to hop off, please feel free to, and we'll stay in touch. And again, don't, don't suffer silently. Just reach out to us with any questions, concerns, comments. Um, we're happy to help. And, and those of you with DOH and DMIFs, Contacts, you know, they're fantastic, of course, too. And so we'll all work together to make this as pleasant a process as possible. And you guys are awesome and flexible. We really appreciate your your very hard work during the summer, during the time when we have all the answers. So thank you, thank you. And Shannon's going to talk some more about YHDP. Okay. Bye. Next slide. Um, okay. YHDP, new and notable. New this year, YHDP projects from round one, which are all of the projects in CT Boss, are going to be ranked. So you already have been scored, and we're going to rank the projects according to the score you received in the renewal evaluation. But they're renewed competitively, whereas in previous years, um, YHDP were it was a given that they would be renewed. And if there were issues with your application, HUD would just work with you um, on, on fixing those. Also, the COC may reallocate YHDP projects to COC projects, um, or projects may still opt to use the YHDP replacement option if they want to stay within that youth population. YHDP projects are not required. This is this remains the same um, as last year to meet the 25% match requirement if the applicant applicant can demonstrate that has taken reasonable steps to maximize resources available for youth. Some grants have used this process already. Um, I think Katie is here, and if, if you are here, um, you could feel free to add anything, but um, Katie said that the YHDP crisis has been providing its own match. So um, for that match waiver section, if you want to update any previous reason reasoning, you can do that as needed. Or if you've been relying on DOH funding, contact Katie Durand at DOH for language on that. And I think her email is later in the slides. Um, we have a template letter for this, for this match exception for YHDP. YHDP renewals, similarly to what we talked about with the other grants, can request to add eligible activities to a project, include, so the special activity we talked about before, the VAWA, or renewals can include special YHDP activities. So that's, if you use them before, you can still use the same ones, or you can elect to use new and different ones in a renewal. You don't need to use a replacement grant for that. And you can also shift up to 10% of funds like we talked about already from one eligible activity to another. And so YHDP still has the replacement option. That's really for bigger changes, like you kind of really wanna change the whole um, 
tenor of your grant instead of doing straight rapid rehousing, you're going to do YHDB crisis or something like that. Um, so, it, so again, it may be used to change component types, but if you do that, it has to be approved by the YAB and the CAN, and we ask that you notify us at CT Boss and Katie at DOH as soon as possible. Um, I don't think we anticipate any of these, but those are the steps to do if you um, do want to make changes. And also your new component type must be consistent with a coordinated community plan. Replacements can also be used to consolidate YHDP projects. Um, so this says may replace portions of its current program design that's true, but more, more likely if you're just changing component types. This year, if you're wanting to add different special YHDP activities, um, you should be able to do that through the renewal process. Um, and of course, all YHDP replacements must directly address youth homelessness. So in the next several slides is a list of YHDP special um, activities. Um, and again, not necessary to net, to um, submit a replacement project for those this year, can do through renewal. And mostly I just left them there because there are some really unique and different and possibly helpful to your participants things that you can do with special YHDP activities that I wanted to provide you all with the information with, but I'm not gonna go and read through them one by one. So um, next slide. I think we'll probably go to keep going. Oh, so many. Yes, there are lots of special activities. So <laughs> if they're special. helpful to you. It makes them less special when you need eight slides. <laughs> <laughs> so mass requirements, it's just, it's this is the same, just a reminder as at all the other grants. If you intend to use program income as part of match, you have to provide an estimate of how much program income you will use as match. I already talked about the special YHDP. You can get a waiver for match. Um, if you're interested in a replacement project, here's boss's email and there's Katie Duran's email at DOH. Um, before we move on from YHDP, I, I don't know if I haven't, if Katie's here and you have anything to add, please do so. I don't see her. Okay, okay. Um, the next slide is about the timeline, which we just talked about, and then questions. Any questions on any of what we talked about? Oops, yeah, yeah this, the resources are all instructional guides, navigational guides that are from 2022 because that's what we have available. Um, they haven't changed very much from year to year, but we anticipate those new activities um, for new information to show up on those new activities. I have a question. I know you said we can move 10% of our 10% um, within the budget to another line item. Yeah. But does that account for also for admin? Because that's usually kind of X'd out where you can't edit that at all. Um, honestly, I would have to check the regulations for that. And I, I know HUD doesn't allow anyone to go above 10% for admin. So I would think that that would be the case for transfers. And but, but we don't allow anyone over 7%. So you'd still have to stay. Well, um, we're well under that. <laughs> we're well under that, but we just, we can't edit it at all. Well, but we're. Yeah, we're not. But where, why are you talking about editing it? Because what we're receiving for admin. Um, no, I mean, where you say you can't edit it. Where are you trying to edit it? In the, for the budget in eSnaps. In eSnaps, I think you should be able to edit admin on that last budget screen that we showed. But in, in, in locks, here's the thing, if you do that within the grant year, is that what you're talking about? Shifting 10% like during, before your grant ends? No, not during, even when we're trying to submit, it's kind of X'd out where we can't go in. 
Well, I would so say it should, we, I mean, it's not open yet. So when it opens in eSnaps, we'll test that, but it should allow you to do that this year in eSnaps. Yeah, okay. and if you're having an issue, if you tried what they say to try and having an issue, contact one of us. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Any other questions? I see we're two minutes over, but we're happy to. Yeah, we're happy to stay on for questions. I'll stop the recording, but we, if people okay. have questions, that's fine.